I think it's important to cover every character the game gives you access to, so today we're going to take a look at Fiora. She's often an underrated and underused character over the course of the game and focuses much on frequently attacking rather than pure raw damage. Now I am going to mention that because of some story events related to Vior that prevents her from being the most useful, I am going to cover the 7th party member in this same video since they are kind of similar gameplay wise, so if you're not past that point in the story, please do not watch this video yet. I'm serious, don't watch it because I will be covering them in great detail. And if you enjoy my content, please be sure to subscribe because it does help me out so much. Now Fiora has some pretty decent arts, some red, a yellow art, and she has a talent art too. Lots and lots of arts. And I'm sure that's all very interesting, but I know that isn't the reason any of you still on the video are here. You don't get Fiora long enough for anything she does gameplay-wise to matter at all and are never going to need to worry about setting her up and making use of her. Hopefully anyone who doesn't want to get spoiled is gone now, so yeah, this video is really about Mecha Fiora. I struggle with thinking of how to cover her given how it can be considered a spoiler in the plot sense even with stuff like Smash and official art of her existing. I thought about saying 7 in the title with a blurred thumbnail, but almost every new player that wants to know how to use Fiora is going to look up Fiora and not 7 because they likely won't know the community code name. As such, I really needed to have her name in the title and this is the best solution I could come up with. I really hope I haven't spoiled anyone accidentally, but I also really wanted to cover her gameplay because she is very fun and very useful. Now without further ado, let's get into the real guide. So Fiora's arts are interesting and extremely varied in use. The first thing we need to discuss is her talent art. Now Fiora's talent art changes depending on what drones you have equipped to her. Her strongest talent art can be obtained from Sedna drones, which can only be gotten as a crust reward later in the game and is known as Sword Drones 10. It hits 10 times and has potential to do a lot of damage over all of the hits. The gauge fills with auto attacks fairly slowly, so make sure you save it for when you really need it if you plan to control her. Other talent arts on her can also work just fine but have similar recharge rates, so there's no extra benefits there. Double Blade is a damage art that does more damage from behind, similar to Backslash. Now the scaling on this art and her other red arts isn't that great. In fact, she's not much of an art user and instead gets much of her damage from auto attacks and provides excellent utility with party gauge support and her other abilities. As such, Double Blade isn't going to ever be world shadowing damage, but it is a red art that can be very useful for combos and chain attacks. Spear Blade is another red art. It has better scaling than Double Blade and does extra damage to toppled enemies. This art is decent for damage, but not something you'll be using too often outside of chain attack, since once again it's typically just going to be better to auto attack. Double Wind is another red art without great scaling, but it does have another benefit of raising your tension by 50 when it connects. This can be very useful for getting your tension up to max as soon as possible since Fiora gets massive benefits from maxed out tension. Shutdown is an art that puts mech on to sleep if you hit them with it. It's very situational and not really worth running if not against Mechon, but it can be nice if you are against them. Air Fang is actually Fiora's highest scaling damage art since it's two hits. It also has a pretty short cooldown and is Fiora's break art. As such, it's pretty useful to have at all times. Cross Impact is her daze art. It's pretty fast and always going to be useful against enemies you can daze. Since I'm fighting a lot of super bosses, I have it unequipped for now, but definitely have this against any enemies that can be dazed. Mag Storm is an area of effect daze art that only works on Mechon. It's okay against them for this reason, but otherwise not really worth running. Second Gear increases Fiora's physical art damage by 50% for 5 seconds. Now even with this, it's still better to just auto attack for damage and the other benefits it provides, so I don't really recommend running this. But if you are going for complete max damage chain attack setups, you can have this art to use before the chain attack for extra damage on all of your physical arts. Now Fiora has 4 auras and all of them focus on pretty different things for vastly different setups, and I'm going to focus mostly on my favorite setup, which is typically considered the best. Healing Energy gradually restores Fiora's HP and removes debuffs if you aren't already running debuff resist. Self-Regen can be useful for certain builds that focus on regeneration tanking with Critical Restore and this, but ultimately it's going to be a little bit lacking as a damage aura. Still, if you want to use Fiora more as a tank, this is a good aura to have. Lock On. This is a good secondary aura to have. It helps you fill up your talent gauge faster, which is always useful, and gives you extra critical rate to try to get party meter up pretty fast. Thing is, you'll probably build party meter just as fast with a different aura, but this still has its uses since the other has a pretty long cooldown. Guard Shift is an aura focused on defense. I don't personally like to run this, but if you want Fiora to be a physical tank, this can be very useful, but I'd recommend focusing more on agility tanking as always. Speed Shift! This is Fiora's best aura and best art by far. It gives you 25% additional double attack rate on top of gems for 75%, and it gives you 105% haste on top of gems and skills also to increase your auto attack rate to super fast. 
and it just allows you to basically be attacking constantly at light speed. One great thing about Fiora's auto attack is that sometimes both of her blades will attack for half damage each, and this is not a typical double attack, which means two chances to proc double attack, and more chances to get critical hits for party meter. This makes her an incredible option for a character that has auto attack DPS, as well as a lot of support with critical hits for party meter with a certain skill of hers. It also allows her to heal herself very easily with critical healing. This is a great aura, and I highly recommend using this at all times. Ether Drain. It reduces enemy ether and it raises Fiora's ether. Fiora doesn't rely on ether for very many attacks, and enemies don't attack with ether super often either, so this isn't the most useful art, unfortunately. Zero Gravity applies paralysis to enemies. Paralysis is one of the strongest debuffs in the game, reducing enemy auto attack rate to 25%, which can really limit the damage your team takes. Definitely would recommend having this most of the time. Power Drain is just like ether, but for strength. This one is a bit more useful and really good to bring against enemies not immune to it. Extra strength really helps Fiora and reducing enemy defense is a great added bonus. Or reducing enemy strength, actually. Final Cross. Believe it or not, this is probably the highest scaling art in the game. It has potential to beat out Fiora's talent art in damage and is basically an X-Buster clone. Not only that, but if the final hit connects, it will force topple on any enemy in the game, including super bosses. That's pretty insane for a single art. Now, it does have some restrictions, however. For one, you have to be at maxed out tension to use this. Luckily, that isn't too difficult for Fiora to accomplish. Secondly, it has a 100 second cooldown even at level 12. This means to really be able to spam this ability often, you have to be using chain attacks quite frequently. Otherwise, it's likely only going to be one use per battle. It's also an ether art and not physical like most of her other damage, so keep that in mind. Still, this art is great, and if maxed out in a chain attack, it can be super strong against many enemies. Now, as far as skill trees, her best passive effect is definitely critical hit rate from Courage. Fiora is a crit machine in this game, and extra critical rate is always super helpful. Not only that, but she comes with some great skills. Ultimate Strike increases damage on all of her critical hits. Critical Combo turns all double attacks, which can be 75% of all of her auto attacks, into critical hits, which combined with all of her haste buffs can make her deal crits basically all the time. Explosion of Energy increases her tension every time she uses her Talon Art. This is a super great ability. This entire tree is super great, honestly, as far as skills. And then, her Innocence tree gives her a lot of strong buffs if she is in the same battle as Shulk, so she can really shine if he's in the party. Naturally, you'll want to do all of her skills anyway, so let's talk about her skill links. Unfortunately, this is one of Fiora's major weaknesses. So, Fiora doesn't actually get access to any star skill links like all the other characters. And this is kind of unfortunate because many of the star skill links are some of the best skills in the game, like Chain of Friendship, Glorious Future, Sustained Spirit, and a bunch of other really, really strong effects that could just make her super powerful. Now, I don't know if they just decided Fiora would be way too broken with those skills or what, but for whatever reason, she does not get access to them, and that kind of limits her skill links a lot. Now, I have tried to get her the most useful skill links that she can actually equip, so let's go through them. Agility up buff at the start of battle at higher level enemies is always useful because we just like having extra agility on everyone we can. Increased tension. Fiora gets a lot of out of having max tension because of final cross and everything like that, so getting her closer to max tension is always going to be useful. Friendship heals. This will heal the party after using a chain attack. Now, Fiora gets the party meter up really fast and is going to be chain attacking pretty frequently, so this is going to help you just restore your HP without needing a dedicated healer. And there's another ability on Rhine that does the same thing, which I also have linked, I believe. Let me see. Yes, this one, shoulder to shoulder. So we get 15% healing after a chain attack. And if you want to stack this up on other party members you have using with Fiora, you can get up to half your health every single chain attack, which is going to help keep you healthy pretty much all the time. Cheer of a friend. This causes burst affinity to fill up more of the party gauge. Fiora's all about chain attacking as much as possible, if you ask me, so I think this is a very, very useful ability to have. Auto attacks and chain attacks is the name of the game here. Equipment master reduces weight of equipment. This is directly correlated with agility, so this is always going to be useful. Already talked about shoulder to shoulder. This is another agility up buff at the start of battle against the odds, so this is just pretty nice to have for two coins. Flying start. Battle start affinity grants the haste buff to the party. Fiora loves auto attacking as fast as possible, so haste is always useful. Ties of Friendship. This increases chain link chance by 5%. It's not as good as the 15% chance that Fiora unfortunately cannot use, but it's still a good ability to just increase the chance of a chain link as much as possible. Reckless Courage. This increases the strength of the battle. Start a battle with higher level enemies. This is very good to just help her strength and um, give her some more damage when battles begin. 
Critical Drain. This is a very good skill for her. 50 coins, but it's still really great. She's doing critical hits all the time, and this restores her health every time she lands one. This will allow her to keep herself healthy without the need for any kind of dedicated healer or healing arts or anything like that. Steel Protection. This reduces the effect of spike attacks. This is just a nice skill to have since we don't really have any better options and we can just put one spike defense on her and allow her not to kill herself with her constant auto attacks against any enemies with spike damage. Charge Acceleration. This gives a haste buff at the start of battle. Same as the Rhine thing. We like having haste on Fjord so she can just attack at light speed. Ardent Strike. This increases tension gained after a critical hit. This is very nice because it just allows you to get a bunch of tension at the start of every battle and just stack it up really quickly and allow you to activate Explosion of Energy for max tension so you can use Final Cross and have max tension for all the extra critical hits. Agility. Watch out. This increases agility when HP is at half. This is just useful to have just in case you do get low on HP and you need some extra evasion chance. Pretty Stars increases strength during the night. This is nice just to increase their strength a little bit. Amazing Stars reduces cooldowns during the night. This is very helpful on Fiora to just make sure she can get speed shift up as much as possible and get final cross up as much as possible if you're somehow in a battle that long. High Speed. This just increases agility by 15. This is just very helpful to have on everyone that can use agility. Ether Awareness. This increases their ether by 25. I didn't really have many better options than just get 6 coins for 25 ether which increases the damage of final cross so I thought it might be useful to have. Ether Expansion, same thing here. I didn't really have any better options that I could see, so this is just useful. Ether Unleashed, this increases the ether when HP is at half. Same thing, I didn't really know anything else to use. And Always Ready increases agility by 10. It's always useful to have extra agility, as I've already discussed plenty of times. So as far as her equipment, Dystopia is going to be her best weapon. Now another big weakness of Fiora is that her weapon damage is much lower than all the other characters' weapon damage, with her best weapon only having maximum attack of 480. I don't know why they decided to do this, I guess they just didn't want Fiora to be super powerful, as I already said, since she already does a lot of things and is very, very versatile. As far as her other equipment, now, this is going to be the one exception where you don't always want a gem slot on every equipment. Sedna Drones, like I already mentioned, gives her access to Sword Drones 10 as her talent art. This is the only Sedna Drones in the entire game. You cannot get a gem slot on this. So as such, if you want the most powerful talent art possible, you do not actually have to have something with a gem slot here. So I would recommend having this if you want the most powerful talent art, but you can run something else if you do want the extra gem slot. As far as everything else, Speed 5 Frame is very useful for just giving her a free haste buff not on her weapon. It is worth noting that if you are going for the most maximum attack damage possible, that the Aether Frame actually gives her a free attack plus on um, weapon equipment. Now, or armor equipment. Now, it's only 44%, so it's not going to be the most efficient attack plus ever, but it is an option and could help maximize her damage. Otherwise, I'd recommend just sticking with Speed for haste, just because haste is going to be very useful for all of her auto attacks. Now, as far as everything else, just have some of the better um, gear as, that has slots open, and that's probably going to be all you really need to worry about. Agility up, Diva for the Spike Resist. These are just Spike Defense. These are pretty much just the best kind of defensive gems we can run on her, so that's what I'd recommend using there. Now, as far as her weapon gems, Double Attack is great just for making sure she's auto-attacking as much as possible, and since all double attacks will be critical hits with her, this is just a super efficient gem with her, and I'd highly recommend using this pretty much all the time. Attack plus and attack stability are just going to help increase her damage a little bit more since her weapon attack's kind of low. And it's personally what I like to run, but you might want to run some different things on her. Like, you, you can run Topple Plus if you want to use Final Cross a lot in chain attacks. You can run... Back attack plus if you want to do some extra damage from behind. There's a lot of things you can run on her to make her more powerful, but this is just typically what I like to run with, and if you want to try some different setups, she's an extremely versatile character, so feel free to do that. And lastly, a final note is um, Made of Monado is a really cool fashion gear setup, so you might want to use that once you get past that point in the story. So with all of that done, let's get into a battle and show what she can do against the strongest enemy in the game. I have Shulk in the party because once again she gets a lot of extra benefits when he's in the party. Additionally, I'm going to start the battle with no party meter just so you can see how fast you can build it if everything goes well. I'm going to activate speed shift for the extra auto attack rate and I'm going to be attacking quite frequently as you already see. It's happening extremely fast and the party meter already has one bar filled up already and we haven't gotten any burst affinity or anything like that yet. Additionally, you can already see Abazid's HP has already been lowered quite a bit just from auto attacks and the arts of my party. And we are now at max party meter. We're able to start the chain attack extremely fast, and from here I'm going to be able to break him and use Dunban to topple. From there I'm just going to go into using all of my other arts and try to chain as much damage as I can while he's toppled. 
Well, at least top of all of my attacks are guaranteed to hit, so I don't have to worry about missing anything, which is going to be very useful. So I believe from here I use um, my Talon Art since it'll be maxed out. Sword Drones 10. You can kind of see it does quite a bit of damage in Chain Attacks. Unfortunately, Chain Attack ends right there, so I don't get any additional damage after that. But I still was able to get quite a bit out of it. I'm also able to use Final Cross on him while he's toppled because I know it won't miss, which is very helpful. The one outside of the Chain Attack. And with the Burst Affinity and all the other damage I've done, we already have the Chain Attack back up again. So we're able to go right back into another one. I'm not necessarily trying to topple lock him here specifically, it's just the, ma the manner of the team I'm using being able to get Party Meter up extremely fast. And I only really want to topple him just to get all my damage off as much as I can. So I'm using Final Cross on a Chain Attack now, not as high damage as I could have since it's not the Multiplier yet. But you can kind of just see, it's able to do quite a bit of damage. I already did 8,000 there with no other boost to it. And from there, this chain attack ends a little bit sooner than I expected. One weakness of Fiora is, once again, she can't link Chain of Friendship, so continuing chain attacks after her is a quite a bit harder than it is for other characters just because of that. You lose 15% chance, so it becomes RNG instead of guaranteed if you get perfect QTs. Fortunately, that doesn't matter because she's able to build the party meter so fast as you've already seen, which is very, very helpful. In this chain attack, I activate Speed Shift again, so close to wearing off, and I already have him still broken from the last time I broke him. And that allows me to refresh that aura once we get outside of the chain attack, so I'm able to continuously use it even without having to wait for the cooldown for it. So that's very helpful to keep speed shift going the entire fight. From there, I'm going to stack up my red arts, and then I'll be able to use um, Monado Buster here so I can use Final Cross freely and get the full 5 times multiplier on it. And you're going to see right here, it's just going to be able to do quite a bit of damage to him. 8,000 damage per hit, 32,000 damage with the art. It's pretty good for an ether art that I haven't invested anything in. Now, naturally, Dunban's going to come in and put that damage completely to shame with his, um, Blossom Dance there, but you can still see the damage was pretty nice regardless. After that, we're able to backslash with Shulk, and the fight is going to end. Having Talon Arts around Final Cross is the way to get the most benefit out of it, because you'll be able to continuously use high damage even though it's a green art. So I'm going to kind of show off the same thing here against Blizzard Belgazus, but kind of just showcase what Fiora can do mostly by herself. Now, on this battle, I don't have really good spike defense equipped on um, Dunban and Shulk, and Blizzard Belgazus has a really nasty topple spike. So I kind of just want to showcase just how effective Fior can be at getting party meter, even without the other members of the party helping. Along with just showing just how much she can do in an actual fight, and how useful she can be utility-wise and damage-wise. So once again, I'm not necessarily focused on topple locking here, it's just useful to topple regardless, and... Having just extra hit rate and everything and da damage from it is just useful no matter what. So I think I completely failed the chain link here because once again I'm really bad at hitting the fourth one for some reason. It's just slightly too slow for me compared to every other affinity thing in the game which is kind of annoying but it's not really a big deal. So you can already see here the party meter is already back up again even though I got only got three attacks on the last chain attack which is actually pretty incredible. So we're able to instantly chain attack pretty much once again here. I start off with just a red combo, and you're going to see my allies here are going to instantly get to 1 HP, but that's not even going to matter. I don't even think they die the, over the rest of the fight, because it really just does not matter at all. You get some extra extra healing when you come out of chain attacks already, so even if they do fall out of 1 HP, it doesn't really matter all that much. I'm able to get a sword drones off um, right here, which is going to do a decent amount of damage to him. He has some pretty decent defenses, though, so it didn't do quite as much as I would have wanted. But you're able to see that 10-hit combo already filled the party meter up, basically already to one and a half already, so that's just actually pretty ridiculous. And I think I end the chain after the uh, next attack. I use Speed Shift to just refresh it like I already said you can do, which is going to be very helpful. You can do that in chain attacks to bypass the long cooldown of it and keep it up 100% of the time, which is always very, very nice. And guess what? We have a chain attack again, and Shulk and Dunban are still doing just fine on HP despite him having that massive topple spike. So once again, we're going to just have their HP to get lower to 1 because we don't actually care about them. And I'm going to fail the chain link again just because I am bad. But it's actually good just to show off your strengths as a character. So once again, you can see the party meter in the corner building incredibly fast. He is going to stand up here this time, and I'm going to immediately get a vision afterwards since my other party members are low HP. And of course, that's going to allow me to get enough party meter to chain attack again. So we get this vision here, it's going to kill us. Yeah, of course, we don't really care about all that. We have 12 seconds to get party meter, and let's see how fast we can get it here. We get a burst affinity, so that's actually even faster. And now I've got both sword drones maxed out again, so I'm going to try to go for a quick kill here. Shulk is to the side of him, I can use slit edge to lower the defense quite a bit. I'm able to continue all the red art chains from there. 
Worldly Slash from Dunban, Backslash from Shulk. Or actually, I'm an auto buster from Shulk just because I wanted the extra damage. And then I'm able to use Sword Drones, and we're going to get 10,000 damage per hit and end the fight. And you can see, even with that topple spike, with the spike defense and the crit healing, Fiora is able to main completely healthy the entire time. In short, the way to use Fiora is to focus on auto attacking very frequently and to use a lot of chain attacks with the party meter she can generate. Fiora is a character that is very versatile and can do many things. She can be set up however you want, this is just my preferred method. And what I'd recommend if you want to take as much advantage of her as possible in order to make quick work of the super bosses without trying to cheese them too hard. Once again, I'd like to thank Nyarlathotep and the community for helping me with this. Check out her text guide on the characters in the description. Fior isn't in there yet, but it's still a great resource regardless. If you enjoyed this guide and are looking forward to future guides on the characters, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and just support me in any way possible. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.